Hello friends and family, YouTubers across the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide and we are on April 11th, 2023. Welcome to another Surviving Day on the Planet and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well. Earthquakes, volcanoes and a look at world weather. Always starting out here looking at our sun for the last 48 hours as we do have five sunspot regions to talk about. No more Earth-facing solar flares or CMEs. M-class solar flare coming from cresting limb. As well, plasma filament there taking off on the right-hand side. And that newly formed sunspot on the right-hand side, bottom right-hand region. That's the last 48 hours incoming, outgoing. A lot of plasma filaments dancing around the equator. Other than that, not too much. Interesting, though, we'll be noting the plasma filament in the northern and southern hemisphere. Fast-forming sunspot there. Northern region. As well, these two active and that M-class solar flare from a cresting sunspot region. Looking at multi-spectrum. No coronal holes to talk about. But noting... The Northern Hemisphere, large plasma filament stretching around the Northern Hemisphere and as well the Southern Hemisphere. Interesting complexity with our sun right now, solar cycle 25, which is a maximum. And we are already well above the predicted values for sunspots. And we have five that are active right now in Earth facing. Amazing images brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory, mixed with daily events worldwide, and I appreciate you all tuning in. Don't forget to give a thumbs up if you're enjoying the content. Space weather conditions, we are at a minor radio blackout impact possible. Low frequency navigation signals may be disrupted. Solar X-ray flux remains in C range right now after seeing two minor M-class solar flares today. Three of them in the past 48 hours. Geomagnetic activity sitting at KP2. Real-time solar wind jumped up to about 448. We're sitting at about 400 kilometers per second right now. Noticing the density and the temperature there. ISPWA space prediction spiral showing a CME taking off outgoing fashion. Having a look there at Earth and as well, Mercury getting ready for a retrograde. Watch for an uptick in seismicity over the next few days as it goes through its transition. Looking at Alaska here, there is a little bit of data missing from these images on Alaska 3. Right about there, you're going to see a jump from 0 to 16. So there's about 16 hours of imagery missing. What happened within those 16 hours? But if you look at the ISWA space prediction spiral compared to last night, Things have really ramped up. There's a lot of energy swirling around our sun right now. Having a look at earthquakes for the past 24 hours, sending at about 300 earthquakes according to USGS, largest being the 5.6 here in New Britain region, Papua New Guinea at a 44 kilometer depth. No real deep earthquakes to talk about. Regular region through Fiji, not getting anything. Deepest earthquake today, 203 kilometer depth, 4.4. Or, yeah, at 4.6 in Germ, Afghanistan. As well, 4.9 here, southern tip of Kamchatka. That's where we have that large eruption at Shevelich. As well, increasing activity here through the Adrianov Islands, Aleutian Islands, up into Alaska. Paka, Hawaii, seeing a 3.4 earthquake today, 26 kilometer depth. <clears throat> Pardon me. California, San Martin. Central California, 3.0. Other than that, not much to, replay, to report across the North American plate. Swarm occurring at Puerto Rico. Having a look at USGS, show you exactly where this swarm is occurring. And as you can see here, 268 earthquakes reported the past 24 hours, according to USGS. USGS. Zoom in here in Puerto Rico. We've got two lines of earthquakes, about just about 30 of them. 
southern parts of Puerto Rico. South American plate, pretty quiet today, 4.6, 4.3, Illapel, Chile. Quiet across the African plate, quiet through the Indian plate, which is strange because we just had that most recent activity there. It's the volcanoes that we got to worry about right now. Stay tuned for a volcanic activity report. We definitely got to get that in here. Pretty sure we're up around the 50 zone. Normally, we should be around 25 to 35 volcanoes. Having a look at the last seven days for earthquakes around the world. All the elevated rings are showing the depth of the earthquakes. Largest earthquake this week was Panama. And as well, sizable earthquake Kamchatka before all these eruptions. And Papua New Guinea. Now some strange satellite imagery here I wanted to share with you overlooking China and eastern Russia. This huge plume of moisture kind of blew up overnight. Low pressure system grinding north of Mongolia. And it just produced this huge plume of moisture. A lot of it falling as snow through parts of eastern Russia. But just some interesting developments. Look at the size of these systems. That low pressure system on the right is sucking up all of the sulfur and ash from that huge volcanic eruption at Shevlich and as well Bezimiani. Having a look here at temperatures for the next week as we do have some pretty cold temperatures moving in from the west. Transition here over to North America. Where, yeah, we've got some really nice weather ahead of us through eastern Canada and the United States. But it will not last forever. Cold temperatures will be coming back towards the end of the month. I wanted to share with you here the upper level winds. Every so often I like to share this with you guys. Especially when I'm seeing such dramatic changes in our equatorial jet stream. If you haven't seen it before, I've shared it a few times but something has changed big time with the directions of the winds and as well where a new magnetic north pole is. And it's over Siberia. It's not over Greenland anymore. Not over Canada. Let's go back to 2022 and look at the winds versus now. This is last year at this time. We'll flip it back to now. Big difference here. Big, big difference in the equatorial winds. Something has changed big time. Our sun is changing big time. And our earth is set to do the same thing. Over the next 10 to 15 years, we're going to see some dramatic changes. And that's why daily events worldwide is here. Having a look at the Pacific Disaster Center, showing most recent satellite imagery and as well, most recent volcanoes getting updated today. After seeing images and satellite imagery of the large Shevelich, we've also got Santa Maria in Guatemala. Nevada Starruas in Colombia. Lots of flood alerts popping up through India and as well as South America. We've got Cotopaxi in Ecuador. Sabancaya in Peru. Popopacarito in Mexico. Reventador in Ecuador. Fuego, Guatemala. Sangue in Ecuador. Dokono in Indonesia. Nishinashima in Japan. And as well, Semeru, Indonesia. So that's about 13 to 14 volcanoes getting updated today amongst the possibly 48 to maybe 50 erupting worldwide. We do have one tropical storm to talk about. Tropical Cyclone Lisa. Or is it Ilsa? I think it's Ilsa. Is alive category one right now and will be making landfall over the next couple days stay tuned for a quick forecast there other than that there are no major cyclones or typhoons developing 
Ilsa may turn into a Category 3 by the time it makes landfall. Makes landfall. Lots of moisture heading into Europe, and as well, storms developing through Central Africa. Here is the forecast model for Tropical Cyclone Ilsa as it heads into parts of Broome, Australia, northwestern Australia, making landfall Thursday and into Friday, and then jetting across the continent, maintaining its low-pressure strength, Having a look here at precipitation models, as it will be bringing quite a bit of moisture. Again, making landfall Thursday into Friday. And then look at this thing as it joins this huge atmospheric river of moisture in the southern hemisphere. Massive low pressure systems in the southern hemisphere. Some strange days, everybody. I appreciate y'all being a part of this family. Getting a full world update right now with daily events worldwide. Let's have a look at North America as it's going to be dry and warm across eastern Canada. Low pressure systems barreling in on BC over the next little while, so west coast is wet. Daily evaporation rains through South America. But watch this system that comes in 16th into the 17th. Watch for extreme weather breaking out across Gulf states and northeastern and south. And then watch for possible wintry conditions on the backside of this big system. Much love, everybody. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily too. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe. Share with your friends and family from across the world.